Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Biodiversity Classification of living organisms Classification and evolution Five kingdom classification Monera Protista Fungi Plantae and Animalia. So we are going to study about the diversity in living organisms. So what, what, do, you, what do you guess from the name of the lesson? Diversity, that means variety. So the variety of living organisms. So when I talk of living organisms, what are the things that come to your mind? The first thing that comes to your mind is we ourselves human beings right we are living organisms we see so many animals around us starting from very small insects or uh, very small organ uh, animals like rats or cat to huge animals like lions tigers and elephants we also think of the, the green the greenery the plants which we see around us right so when i talk of this variety so actually when I talk of living organisms, we actually have a huge variety of them. There are a lot and a lot of life forms which we actually do not experience in our day-to-day -day life. So here on the screen, currently you can see some of the animals which we are quite familiar with. Like elephants, dogs, monkeys, rats, tigers, rabbit, lion, camel, cat, snake, these are some of the animals which we are quite familiar with. So when I talk of a dog, maybe you see a dog even in, uh, to the, in the next street to your house, you get to see a dog. But when I talk of a lion, maybe you get to see them only when you go to a zoo or when you visit some national park, right? So these are still some of the animals which we are quite familiar with. Of course, needless to mention, we human beings also fall into the form of life forms. The insects which we see around us, when I talk of insects, there are so many varieties of insects itself. Be it butterflies or maybe it, the normal flies or the mosquitoes or the cockroach or the worms which you see, right? So even in that, we have so many varieties of insects. So maybe there are a lot more than we actually know, right? Then let's talk of the aquatic life. There, there are so many different forms of life in water, whether it is the marine water or it is the fresh water or the, the small water bodies. So you can think of varieties of fishes again, starting from big fishes like whales or the dolphins or the starfish or the octopus. So not only the fishes, other than fishes also, you have so many different forms of life in water. You can think of birds. Even in birds, you have so many varieties of birds. You have pigeon, you have sparrows, you have crows. So many varieties actually, right? Not only this, you have another life form in the form of the microorganisms, which we do not see with our naked eye, but they are also present whether it is bacteria or the viruses or the fungi which are more famous for causing diseases we often have um, a negative thought about the microbes because we feel that all microorganisms are responsible only for causing diseases well it, it's not exactly like that they do a lot of good jobs as well so we'll get to know about all of that as we go ahead with this lesson so then we have the entire plant kingdom where we have a variety of trees starting from the big trees or the small flowering plants or the grasses which we see. So if I start counting the living organisms which we see around us, the list will actually go endless. Actually, we will not be able to complete that list. That's because we do not encounter each and every life form that exists on this earth. There are a variety of trees which grow or which are seen only in dense forests or which are seen only in the hilly areas. So we see them only when we go there, right? Similarly, there are a variety of microorganisms which we don't, which we can't even see with our naked eye. 
So we miss all of them as well. We miss a, a, a good lot of aquatic life because we really don't know. These are some of the things which we know that they are like, they are aquatic life forms. For example, the fishes. If I ask you what all life forms exist in water, the first thing you'll say is fishes. That's the most common life form. But even in, inside fishes, you have so many different varieties of fishes which we are again not aware of. And not only fishes, there are a variety of aquatic plants which exist. There are a variety of aquatic animals which actually exist under the water and we are not aware of. So what we actually see or what we have actually seen with our own eyes, that is just a very, very, very small portion of the actual existing life forms on this earth. Right? So now you would have got an idea that in th this lesson we are going to study about these life forms which exist on this earth. So now the question is, the task is going to be difficult, right? Because there are so many of them and there are actually so many of them that we don't know many of them that, okay, this also existed, I never knew that. It is something like that. So how are we going to study about each of them in detail when we don't even know whether that exists or not? So here in this lesson, I'll teach you about something very interesting and very important as well. We should know all different forms of life that exist on this beautiful planet Earth. Now, the problem is that since there are so many varieties of them, so it is quite difficult to learn or to know about the characteristic of each of them in detail because we don't we don't even know how many of them exist because there are so many of them right so we will find out an approach to study about the variety of life forms that exist on this earth so this lesson is going to focus about the various life forms we will actually categorize them into groups we will categorize the life forms into different groups and we will study about the characteristics of each group in detail one by one so that is going to be our agenda in this lesson so with this small introduction let us start with biodiversity what do we mean by biodiversity? So what, what does the name suggest? So see, when we, when we study biology, it becomes very important to observe the names because the names itself will tell you a lot of things. So the name itself can make you understand what it is, right? So here, biodiversity. What is bio? Bio is something which is related to life. That is why the subject is called biology, right? So biodiversity, diversity means variety. So biodiversity means the variety of life forms that exist. So the variety of life forms existing on earth is known as biodiversity. Now each of these life forms which I'm talking about has a very important role to play. I mean, it is not that some of the organisms are important and some are not. Each and every living organism existing on the earth is very, very important. Each of them is playing a very crucial role. So if one of them is not there, the entire balance of the earth might get disturbed. So let us have a look at this example. So when I talk about the balance, I am actually talking about the ecological balance. So what is the ecological balance? Now when I talk of this ecological balance, I am talking about uh, the balance which is maintained in, between the various life forms existing on earth. Let us look at this example. When you look at these plants, these plants are eaten by animals like goat, Right? Goat feeds on plants. So goats are completely dependent on plants for their survival because these plants act as their food. Now similarly, these goats are again eaten by animals like jackal. So they are all kind of animals which feed on flesh. So they feed on animals like goat. Again, these jackals in turn are again eaten by animals like lion. Right? Again, these plants are eaten by, not only goat is not the only animal that feeds on plants, right? There are several other animals which feed, which depend only on plants for their food. Let us take another example of rabbit. Rabbit again feeds on plants. 
this rabbit again can be eaten by a wild cat and this wild cat can again be eaten by this lion right so now if you look at it what do you see if i if let me assume if i consider that one of these animals is missing so let us suppose if this mouse if this rabbit is missing what would happen the entire balance will get disturbed because the wild cats which feed on this rabbits they will not get their food so what will happen the wild cats will start starving so when they start starving they will keep on dying when the number of wild cat will reduce what will happen lions will not get anything to eat so they will start starving right so that means there is a dependency but at the same time i am not saying that wild cat is the only animal that lion feeds on lion has a lot of variety what i am trying to say is that so whatever organisms exist on the earth they try to maintain a balance between each other so if the population of one of these animals reduce or increase to a very large extent then that will affect the balance on the earth right now not only these organisms even the microorganisms they also play a very important role when i think of this organisms like fungi right what do they do when these plants die the plants get dried up and they die so what happens that plant waste is actually decomposed by microorganisms like fungi which feeds on the dead and decomposed objects so the dead plants and animals are eaten by this fungi so these microorganisms also play a very important role so this here i have given just one small example to make you understand that how the dependency is there between the various life forms so even on a broader scale the dependency always exists and that is why you would have heard that people often say that we we should save animals from being from getting extinct there are a couple of animals like the dinosaurs on which most of us would have seen the movie jurassic park right so the movie was amazing but do we see dinosaurs anymore we don't that's because they have been they have become completely extinct now so similarly people often say that there are a couple of animals there are quite a, a big variety of animals which are again on the verge of extinction and we should try to save them that's because the more variety we have on the earth the better it is right so today the lion has so many options to feed on it can feed on the jackals it can feed on the goats it can feed on the wild cats it can feed on even humans right but now if out of these one or two species get extinct so the options will reduce right so this will affect the entire balance as a whole so in this slide what i want to convey is that that each and every life form that exists on the earth is very very important so we cannot ignore any of them we can neither ignore plants we can neither ignore animals we can neither ins ignore insects or birds or the microorganisms also because everybody is playing a very important role now what role each of them is playing we will get to know as we go ahead with this lesson and we start studying about each of them separately so preventing species extinctions is one way to preserve biodiversity so what is biodiversity it is the variety of life forms so if one by one the species start becoming extinct what will happen the variety will reduce right suppose if if you go to a restaurant where they say that okay we have a buffet dinner today and we have um, eight varieties of sweet dishes for you right now if out of that they say that we however we had eight variety of sweet dishes but three of them are over so we are just left with five so that means the variety reduced right so similarly when we talk about the variety of living organisms if few of them become extinct so the variety actually decreases so and when the variety decreases the biodiversity loses its charm and the entire ecological balance is disturbed and that is what is not desirable right okay thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again